Can I have your attention, please? Let me have your attention, please. There's the man. Mr. Turner's in the house. If you can, if you can get in. You know, it takes courage to stand up. It takes courage. It takes courage to get in, in into a movement like this and move forward and do the things that you need to do to solve the problems of this state and this nation. You know, and I've heard Scott Turner say this at least a dozen times at, at, at several meetings that I've been to with Scott. You know what? Our ideas are not old-fashioned. Our ideas are Christian foundational fa uh, movements and principle and values and standards that will last a lifetime. You don't change those. Those things don't change. And the thing about Scott Turner, he says, I like old school. <laughs> huh? That's Scott Turner. Scott, come on here, buddy. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey. How's everybody doing? Hey. That's the radio stand up. Just talk. It's live stream radio. Yeah, that's kind of different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know. You got to touch that right there. And do you talk? Stand on the edge. Let you know if it's radio. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hey, how you doing? How's everybody doing? Yeah. Well, you know, the reason why I can be um, here today, one, yes, is by the grace of God. And it was one year and two days ago that Robin and I walked into the building and filed the paperwork to run for speaker. And it's been a great journey. Um, and I've learned a lot. And I've learned a lot about the campaign process. I've learned a lot about um, people. I've learned about a lot about representatives, but what I have been so blessed is I've learned about the heart of the people of Texas. And that's what really kept me going. And your prayers, your text messages, your emails, your phone calls, even sometimes when you called and complained. <laughs> and said, well, Scott, you're not doing this and you're not doing that. I appreciate that, even the constructive criticism. <laughs> I'm not so proud that I cannot take encouragement and criticism. But I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for standing with me. Thank you for those who posted things on Facebook encouraging me and encouraging your friends and constituency and your representatives. It is a true honor to be here. It's a true honor to stand before you. This is a tremendous assignment, and I'm humbled that I get to do it, but I didn't do it by myself. It's been all of you, it's been my precious family, those representatives that have stood with me through the trials and the test of time, and even those who have not been with me, I've received some encouragement from them as well, those that plan on making different decisions when the vote comes down. But I'm so happy that today is here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be even more happier tomorrow. God give me the grace to see tomorrow. I'm going to be so happy. Because I believe that it's a day that's necessary in our state. And that we get to set the gold standard and the precedent of not just campaigns, not just politics, but how the people get to be involved with their representatives in the process of elected leaders, and I think that's ne necessary. I look forward to tomorrow to being with my colleagues, 
with my family, with all of you. And you know what? Texas is deserving of this type of historical day. It's been a long, long time since a vote was taken in the contested speaker's race. And that should not be. I don't know all the reasons why that has been. But tomorrow we get to raise the bar and set the standards for the generations that are coming behind us. And I'm humbled to be able to be a part of that. And speaking of those principles, and I was thinking about that this morning, and some of you have heard me discuss this and some of you may have not, but the principles that we stand on as Texans, as conservatives, um, as, as advocates for the Constitution, as Christians, as mothers and fathers, as husbands, as business people, the principles that we stand on of faith and family and free enterprise, Principles like humility and virtue and honor. Principles like righteousness and selflessness. Those things that those in uh, a progressive movement, if you will, even those that are against us, say, well, those principles and those who advocate for those principles are one and the same, a foregone conclusion. Well, I say the contrary. Those principles are not obsolete. Those principles are not um, trendy. Yes, they are old school. And I do like old school. <laughs> but I believe that these principles that transcend generations, that transcend political parties, genders, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, that we need to shout them from the rooftops. Because they're the bedrock principles on which this country and our state were founded upon. And long after I'm gone, long after my names are written in the Chronicles of History, and I'm sitting at the knees of my Savior. Those are the principles that will sustain those that are coming behind me. And that's what I care about. I'm not here for the And I tell you that because that's really what I believe and that's what my heart is. I've heard all the reasons why I ran for speaker. I've heard all the... the excuses why I should not run and why I cannot win. None of those deter me. I have not wavered nor have I equivocated from my vision that I set forth in the beginning, the principles that I stand on and my purpose for being here. And it's been 100 or 367 days. And I encourage people to say, you know, I'm the same Scott today as I was before I filed for speaker. And I'll be the same, Scott, after we take the vote. And when I leave the Texas House, whenever God says the same. And I want to set a standard and a precedent in our state and in our country that you can be a gentleman, you can be a statesman, and you can stand firm with your principles and convictions and still be successful. But yet, even more importantly, make a tremendous impact in your generation. That's what my heart is. Now tomorrow... We'll take a vote. Tomorrow, every member will have an opportunity to put his or her name on the board to see who they want as Speaker of the House. And I'm praying real hard that they all want me. <laughs> but it'll be a day that's very important. And I have the green light on the board. So all of those who will be voting for me will push the green light. And, you know, I like the green light because it says go. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe there's a lot to that. And so I want you to pray for the representatives. All 149 of them, including myself, so all 150 of us. Because there's a big decision to be made. But I believe that when we make this decision, that not only for today, but for the posterity of our state, will be impacted greatly. And so again, I'm grateful for you. And I wish I could tell each of you that individually, but know that I pray and I thank God for you and your family. I thank you for standing. I thank you for supporting me. And thank you for praying for us as representatives and for our great state of Texas. This is the best state in America. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. a long road ahead, 
but I'm willing. I'm willing that we are indeed able. Now, one thing that I do want is that when people watch and see what goes on in Texas, that they'll be encouraged. Because there's a big uh, um, spirit of hopelessness in America today. I mean, look at the stuff that went on in Paris. You know, stuff that's going on around the world. People are hopeless. Fear is abounding. But we have an opportunity to debunk that and say, you know what? Be not hopeless, but be encouraged. Because there's some people down here in the Lone Star State that we still believe in the Constitution. We still believe in faith and family and freedom. And you know what? You can always move to Texas. <laughs> Legally. But. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you have to move here abiding by the laws of the land. Thank you for and the English is the language. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that we can provide a sense of hope. And not just hope, but encouragement to the people of America. And I think tomorrow will be a good start in that. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of issues that are facing our state, which we all know of. Border security, transportation, education, Second Amendment rights uh, that we have to tackle. And we're going to have to make bold decisions and stand up and listen to the voice of the people. And have your voices and your hearts in the forefront when we make these decisions. And so I hope to be uh, part of the uh, leading that way. You know, so Texas, for the posterity of our state, will continue to be strong and prosperous and free. God bless you. Thank you. Pardon? Scott, would you lead us in a prayer? Yeah. You bet. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here together. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your discernment. God, I pray for each and every one of these individuals that are here. Thank you for bringing them safely to Austin. Thank you, God, for their families. And Lord, I pray that whatever needs that meet that need to be met, Father God, that you will meet. The Bible says you are the great I am. And Father, whether it be a relational need, a financial need, a health need, Father, I pray that you would just shine ever so brightly, Father God, on each and every family represented here today. Father, I thank you that you've given us an opportunity to be together. I pray, God, for all of my colleagues in the House and in the Senate, Father God, that as we approach this next 140 days, that we would hear the voice of the people, that we would glorify you and honor you in our actions and the motive of our heart. And Lord, I do pray, Father, you will be glorified in everything we do. And God, I thank you for these people who have so tirelessly gave their time, their efforts, their resources, Father, in supporting not only my effort, but efforts of those who they elect, Father, to represent them in this Texas house. God, I'm praying for your anointing, your spirit, and your power to fall upon them ever so mightily. Do exceedingly abundantly above all they can ask or imagine. And Father, I pray you will credit the spiritual count of those who are here. And Lord, may we receive, may you receive the glory. And Father, while we're at it, I pray you will forgive us of our sins, forgive us of our wicked ways. Help us to turn back to you. Lord God, to bow in humility to you. And Father, that you would not lift your hand from us. But, Father, you will use your hand to guide us and to lead us and teach us. Thank you for your word, which is the final authority in our life. We honor you, we praise you, and we bless you. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bill Zedler came in just a minute ago, and he has about 90 of these this Election Day sermon. It's a beautiful, beautiful sermon. And, I, and any of you that want it, that we're going to pass it out. We'll have it back here, and you can pick that up. Uh, thank you so much, Scott. Thank for all those state representatives that have came. Thank for the speakers, Joanne, all the rest of us that have been here today that uh, to, to work for our, our state legislature, our uh, the House and the Senate. 
and, and keep up the good work. And this room right here will be open tomorrow until 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Come over here, sit down, rest your feet. Sign on, bring people in, sign them up back here, and join the movement. Join the grassroots adventure. Yeah. We have things to do. Thank you so much for your attendance. Thank you. I got it.